Hey, it's Ben Fielding from Hillside. I just want to thank you for watching this video. You are on our YouTube channel and you can subscribe to it on this link right down here. This is my Savior's blood Your beauty of heaven wrapped in my shame The image of love upon death's frame If having my heart was worth Joy could you see beyond the grave If love found my soul were dying for How wonderful, how glorious My Savior's God, victorious
begin our this final celebration in the life and times of our brother Paul Joseph John let us pray with faith in Jesus Christ we receive the body of our brother Paul Joseph John for burial our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Paul Joseph. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. <coughs> Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue <coughs> Excuse me. our course on earth <coughs> until by your call we are reunited with those <coughs> who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus said, <coughs> I am resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, no height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. 
And now we call on Terence and John to share with us remembrance of his dad in the eulogy. On behalf of the parish of St. Matthias, we offer our condolences to the family. Good morning. Thank you, Father Archer. Um, Paul Joseph John was born in Delaford, Tobago on the 27th of April, 1935 to Theophilus and Henrietta John. He was the second of nine children. As a boy growing up in Delaford, Tobago, he enjoyed his fishing expeditions with his brother, Iokim, and would recall their interesting encounter with a biting eel at one of the local beaches. I think it's called Injun Bay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he enjoyed cooking a good fish broth and also one of the things they call pacro and wilts. He made a stew with that, with a coconut, you know, with, mixed up with coconut and all that. So he's a bit of a chef. He was adored by both his paternal and maternal grandmothers. And according to Auntie Pearl, he was a very loving and caring brother to all of his siblings. After attending the Delaford Anglican Primary School, he jumped at the opportunity to learn joinery. And I can tell you from observation and experience that he was quite versatile as a joiner. This skill paved the way for him to move to Trinidad in 1956. He worked with his uncle's construction company uh, on many building and house projects. I personally, I witnessed uh, daddy's build, building furniture. I, I you know, experienced it because he built stuff for a home including tables, beds, curio, which you call a buffet, you all know a buffet, uh, space savers, and many more things like that. Over the years, daddy's siblings and relatives, they also benefited from his joinery skills and his generosity as he would have built and installed several items for them. My brother Richard and I were not so reliable assistants during these home building projects, especially when our favorite TV shows were on. Of course, this created the perfect opportunity for us to learn that daddy can actually get upset as he would suddenly interrupt our show watching with belt in hand. Anyway, <laughs> I also learned that daddy was an avid cricketer as he would return to Delaford every Easter to take up his place in the community cricket team to battle against the village council team. I mean, all of this information is coming to us via his sister, Auntie Pearl. <laughs> in 1956, however, sorry, in 1959, he met my mother, Megan. And as she put it, he wooed her with his smooth, sweet talk while riding past her home on his Big Ben bike. Now, of course, this seemed to have impressed her quite a bit because after all, I'm here, right? So it, it would have worked. <laughs> Daddy's light brown eyes and soft-spoken soft -spoken demeanor must have played a key role in capturing her heart. She recently reminded me that he would take her for walks, nightly strolls, as she put it, while uh, decked in his fat pants. Apparently, that was his style back then, so she remembered that quite, you know, quite nicely. I cannot remember ever hearing them speak ill of each other. They loved each other immensely. With her, he raised us to know how to respect our elders and not to have an interest in things that don't belong to us. No one seems to be able to describe Daddy as anything but calm, peaceful, disciplined, and respectful. I grew to believe it was virtually impossible to make daddy upset. 
All right, all right. There was this one time, though. The, I decided that I will challenge one of my cousins, Tony, <laughs> to race around Columbus Square. You all know that place, Columbus Square in town? So as a child coming from school, I challenged my cousin for a race around Columbus Square. All right, that's where we would usually wait for our uncles. They, you know, the uncles drove taxis, so we'd wait for them there. And I challenged Tony to a race. And I knew very well that if I just had a chance of winning or beating Tony in this race, I'll have to take off my glasses. I can't run my fastest with my glasses. So I took off my glasses and I placed it right next to my school bag on the pavement. All right, I mean, after all, it was an important event, right? You can't, you know, do things to keep you, to slow you down. All right, so I placed it next to the pavement, pav ne next to the bag. So during the exciting race, our ride turned up, and I hastily grabbed my bag and entered the car. I only realized that my glasses were missing <laughs> when Daddy, who would normally call me Terry, you know, that's my pet name, his pet name for me. He didn't address me as Terry that night. He called me by my full name. Right, and that is when I realized something was a bit not right. Then he said to me, he asked for the, um, where my glasses were. Of course, by then somebody had slipped at him, so he knew. <laughs> All right, so the stern look was enough, to be quite honest. Right, and of course, by him calling me my full name, all of that was like discipline. That is, you know, he wasn't a beater. So things like that is like when he did that, call you by your full name, and it's like that is discipline in itself. So that was sufficient punishment for me. My brother Richard had a similar experience when he lost a couple of his school books at school and then pretended to be looking for them at home. So he would have gotten a similar type of um, treatment. He recently reminded me about that. That is love and generosity were demonstrated as he raised and nurtured his stepson Garfield as his own. He taught him all the life lessons he could and gave him the security that he needed. In Garfield's own words, uncle was a father to me and to my children after me. After being a Wharton Street taxi driver for many years, daddy decided to start a transport business. In 1979, he bought a used Bedford truck and fixed it up real nice, right? And being a skilled joiner, he rebuilt the tray entirely out of wood. It was the talk of the town. All right, okay, maybe not the talk of the town. He was, it, was a talk, it was a talk among his relatives. <laughs> he painted it red with a sky blue front bumper. Right? It became a hit upon, among his nieces and nephews. They affectionately referred to the truck as Moo. And Daddy then became known as Uncle Moo. And Avi? <laughs> right. My Daddy likes singing. My mom believes he had a beautiful singing voice. But I'm not sure if she agrees that it was passed down to me. <laughs> However, he and I, we have a rendition of a song called Unchained Melody that we did. You know, we brought the house down at a family event a couple of years ago. You may have seen on the slides us doing it. <laughs> he had a passion for smooth soul music and wind instrumentals, with his favorites being Billy Paul, Ace Cannon, and Sel Duncan. Daddy, daddy, wasn't, daddy wasn't what you refer to as a church man, all right? He wasn't a church man as you would know a church man to be. But I remember seeing him a few times, well, on mornings, on his knees at the bedside. A couple of weeks ago, during one of our last man-to-man -man conversations, I remembered... I remember talking to him about the, the, the thief who was crucified along with Christ and how that thief believed and acknowledged Christ, Jesus as the Savior, and wanted it to be with him in paradise, right? So he used the last opportunity he had to do that, right? When I told Larry that, he responded with a faint nod. I mean, he was ailing, at the, you know, so he responded to me in a faint nod. So at this point in time, my hope 
is that in Daddy's last days with us, that he developed a relationship with God and thanked him for a full and rewarding life that we came to celebrate here today. I will miss our father, Daddy, Papa, also known as Uncle, as Garfield will call him, Mr. Paul, as the people in the, in the village would call him, Pablo, as mommy would call him. I heard people call him Nando, but I, I couldn't remember who exactly did it, but Nando, nonetheless. And Uncle Mu. He taught me about unconditional love, faithfulness, responsibility, and stability. A man of few words, but depth in character. Thank you for those life lessons, Daddy. Thank you. And now, my friends, we have a trumpet solo by Mr. Rol Relon Brown. we will stand and sing our first hymn, To God Be the Glory.
glory, great things he hath done. So love he the world that he gave us his Son. Go ye in his life and atonement for sin, and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let me hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender, who truly believe that moment from Jesus the pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and a greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be a wonder of transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people Rejoice, oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Your response to the sentence is Holy God, holy and mighty. Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. Will you say that together with me, please? Holy God, Holy and Mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. In the midst of life we are in death. From whom can we seek help from you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered together? Holy God, Holy and Mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Paul Joseph, and we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated for the readings from the scriptures. A reading from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6 and 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones as he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. We now sing Crimond, the Lord's my shepherd. <laughs> Seated. Reading. 
Good day, everyone. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. The coming of the Lord. But we, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means proceed before who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with him, to meet him in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Gradual him blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Please stand. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect commission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. The Lord be with you. The 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Savior. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, I thank God. And may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Dear friends, our normal practice within the parish is that when someone dies, the night before the funeral, we gather together in the home, the family home, and we have a service in which any and everyone who is there gets the opportunity to, show, to share some remembrances of the person who has died. Unfortunately, we live in difficult times, COVID times, where we are more often than not separated from each other, and we cannot do the things that we would normally do. But I was able to do that with his sons. Unfortunately, his wife, Megan, could not have been present with us, but I was able to do it with his sons and have them share with me their remembrances of their father. And I could sum it, sum it up all by saying that he showed love and he received love. He showed love and he received love. And though that love was made most manifest to us today again in Terence's eulogy of his father. This word eulogy is a very important word in the church. It's made up of two Greek words, eu, which is good, and logo, which is to speak. So. The eulogy is about speaking well about a person. And we speak well about people who touch our lives in important ways to the point where we begin to feel that, yes, this person has made such a difference in my life that I will go on thinking and holding dear the memory of the relationships that I would have had with the person. And that's what I was hearing from his sons. Little anecdotes, little anecdotes. One that stands out for me is Terence Tripp uh, challenging his father to a race and his father joyfully taking part and they running in Tobago the race. And was it Richard? Oh no. Who went, who had to go out late at night to go searching for books? Okay, right. So your dad was a person with a sense of humor and a very good way of helping his children to understand that there are certain obligations. So when things are not done the way they ought to be done, they are appropriately disciplined. So if you have to get, wake up and go out in the middle of the night or late at night to go looking for books, then you know next time I got to make sure and take care of what is mine. 
But I think the thing that stands out for me is number one son who talked of himself as a stepson who was treated as a son. And I had to tell him the word step doesn't, doesn't register in the mind of somebody like Paul Joseph John. He was son and he was treated as son and he was made to recognize that there were certain expectations so that when he got to the right age, he was sent off to equip himself for life by being sent to learn a trade. That's what it's all about. Family is such a very beautiful and important thing that we have to, especially in these difficult times, learn how to appreciate, appreciate each other. I have just come back from Canada, having spent two and a half months with my son and my, and my daughter in their country. And, you know, it was a joy to be with them. And it was a really learning experience because my son is a doctor and he was informing me all about COVID and the effects of COVID on, human, on the human being and all that it is doing in Canada in Saskatchewan and Alberta where I was, and what would see it is doing here in our country. And we have to recognize that death is something that we all have to face. The poet says, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death, but once seeing that death, a necessary end will come when it will come. And in our times, we have this thing called COVID-19 that is bringing death to us in ways that we would rather avoid. But we have to live with the reality of the world in which we live and do whatever we can to make sure that we can alleviate and get rid of the things that could hurt us like these pandemics. I just want to share with you one thing that I, I held out from my son that I hold on to in all the things he talked about. Because he talked about the ICU, and if you go to the ICU and you make it out, you're lucky. But if you get out of the ICU, you're never the same person you were before you went in the ICU. But one of the things that I hold on to is him saying that when he was a student, before he became a doctor, an Indian professor said to his class, do you know what is tetanus? And none of the kids knew what tetanus was. He said, well, I think you guys need to go to India to see what tetanus is all about. What he was saying to them is that tetanus was one of the things that they have all been vaccinated for, but they know nothing about it. And they're all training to be doctors. And what he was saying is, do not take for granted those vaccinations that we have received as children, because that's what has kept us alive. So I decided to go on the internet and see what was the effect of smallpox on the human body. Now, smallpox has been eradicated. There's no more smallpox in the world. Smallpox has been eradicated through vaccination. And when I saw what smallpox does to human bodies, the ugliest thing that you could ever imagine, and we are no longer dealing with that. But there was an article in one of our newspapers, Trinidad Guardian or whatever, by Chalk Dust, and Chalk Dust quoted our, our young man, Trinity the Bone. Give me his name again. David Rudder. Now, David Rudder is somebody my sister taught at school at Princess Elizabeth. And David Rudder had said, if he had received a vaccine when he was a young person, he would be walking normally. David Rudder is a polio survivor. So that there we have in our midst people who have the experience of the importance of vaccination. So family, 
is important, and whatever we can do to uphold and strengthen family, that's what we do. So we see Jesus with his family, his friends, Martha and Mary, and they are in a crisis. And they say to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's Martha. Because she has this confidence that Jesus is a healer, and that if It's saying that if Jesus was present, her brother would not have died. And Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again. And she takes that as, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I, I am a Jew, a good Jew who understand that resurrection. Yeah, I know he will rise again at the resurrection of the last day. And then Jesus says these famous words, I am resurrection and I am life. He who believes in me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. So that when we begin our funeral service, notice that the first thing we, we reminded you of was that our brother was baptized. And when we say that, we are saying he is a member of Christ, a child of God, and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. That's who he is. That's his identity. Paul, Joseph, John, member of Christ, child of God, and inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. So those words that Jesus pronounced for Martha are the words that he is hearing also. I am resurrection and I am life. Whoever believes in me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And what Jesus is saying is that the important thing is belief. The important thing for the Christian is belief. They who believe in me, even though they die, will live. That is the effect that believing in Jesus has on the believer's death. We don't die. We don't die. Because we believe. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. That is the effect that believing in Jesus has on the believer's life. So it's about belief. So when we hear Jesus saying to Mary, I am resurrection and I am life, do you believe this? She says, yes, I believe that you are. I believe. That's what Mary says. I be Martha rather says, I believe. And that's what the church has done with us over the years. Paul, Joseph, would have, as a person growing up in the church, every time he went to church, he would say, I believe. That's part of our Anglican Christian liturgy. I believe. So that belief is what it's all about. If we are believers, then death is not something that we panic about or worry about. We just see Jesus standing outside of Lazarus' tomb, and we see all those people standing around saying, what is he going to do now? And he says, Lazarus, come out. Come out. And Lazarus comes out. That's the kind of faith that we have as believers. Our Lord and Savior is about saving us. So that in the midst of life, when we are in death, we know that we are in his hands. So that in these difficult times, these difficult times, we do everything that we can possibly do, that we can possibly do to be disciplined Anglicans, disciplined Christians, disciplined people who would do and follow the rules and regulations that the wise ones, the scientists, have given us. They have given us things to live by 
and they are constantly doing things to keep us alive. I love my family. I enjoyed being with my family for the two and a half months that I was up there. And only day before yesterday, I was talking with my son about the fact that my five-year-old granddaughter had received her first jab. And she didn't like it at all. She said she was ready to sue the doctor. She didn't like that. But she will have to go again and get a second jab. So that that's what we do. We do the best we can in spite of the reality. We are being threatened by more variants and different things that are coming to, to us. But nevertheless, we go to Jesus' favorite psalm. Psalm number 31. And in that psalm, we hear him say, into your hands I commend my spirit. I call it his favorite psalm because he uses those words at the very end of his life. On the cross, into your hands I commend my spirit. But in the body of that psalm, we read the words, my times are in your hands. Always remember that. My times are in your hands. So whatever the times bring to you, remember, in God's hands is where we place our lives. And this witness I offer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us now stand and confess our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our brother, Paul Joseph, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Your response, hear us, Lord. Lord, you remember, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Paul or Joseph and dry the tears of those who weep together. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow together. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Raise our brother, Paul Joseph, to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother, Paul Joseph. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We give each other the sign of peace without actually touching each other. Peace be with you. Okay. We
we sing the hymn, Because He Lives. Because He Lives. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know Because he lives, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance. And fell a face on sitting before she lives. Because she lives, I can face tomorrow. Because she lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. of glory and I know he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone and those I know he holds the future Life is worth the living just because he lives. Give rest, to Christ, to your servant with your saints. We are sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us commend our brother Paul Joseph to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Paul Joseph, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, 
wherever the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, be the man to your servant, for the Lord. Acknowledge enough to beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of his everlasting peace and in the glorious company of the saints in life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Paul, Joseph, May the angels lead you into paradise, and the martyrs receive you at your coming, and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels receive you, and may you and Lazarus, no longer poor, have everlasting rest. Amen. Grant to Lord to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May all Joseph and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The Lord bless him and watch over him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. This day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. I am walking on my way to the Lord.